thank you all for inviting me to be able to talk about Drive Health here and how Drive Health has used Aaron to kind of uh, retool our trading stack at uh, Drive Health. Um, I won't go into deep uh, technical stuff like uh, Dave was saying uh, that uh, we'll get into here. I'll leave that to the Aaron experts and I'll kind of give you an overview of uh, what uh, Drive Health has done with Aaron. Um, I'm the um, head of our core trade team. Uh, uh, lead a, a team of uh, front end, full stack, and uh, back end engineers. Uh, prior, uh, I joined DriveAuth in March of 2021. We started working with Adaptive and Aaron shortly thereafter, um, late in uh, 2021, uh, before we launched our first Aaron based system in. Uh, fall of uh, 2022. Uh, previous to Drive Wealth, I was at B of A with an um, electronic trading. Uh, was there for 20 years. I uh, I was a key uh, contributor to a Java framework that was kind of very similar in terms of uh, principles. That it was a single threaded architecture, uh, zero GC, low uh, latency. Uh, we then used that framework to go and uh, retool the entire electronic trading stack at uh, B of A, using that to build out high frequency, uh, medium frequency gateways and whatnot. So very familiar with the architecture principles that Aaron has to offer here. Um, a, a little bit about DriveWell first here before I get into the uh, use case. Uh, DriveWell's uh, mission statement is to globally democratize investing in US securities. We were a pioneer, we were the pioneer of fractional and notional trading in 2016. Um, we offer uh, retail uh, businesses and fintech the ability to embed investing in their platforms, right? You can think of things like uh, stock, uh, stock uh, rewards and uh, roundups, things of that nature. Um, so we're offering brokerage as a service to go and build financial tools on top of. Uh, execute over a billion dollars a day in uh, Notional and over two uh, million orders a day being executed. Um, a, a little bit about the uh, use case and kind of how we got to this point, right? So drive went from being a uh, B2C to offering brokerage as a, as a service to fintechs um, around the world. Uh, here's some of them that we're offering services to. Uh, we execute low uh, notional orders at scale. So this was the challenge, right? As we're going and uh, going from a uh, B2C to going and offering uh, a uh, brokerage as a service and offering the ability to do uh, roundups and stock rewards and stuff. Obviously, there's going to be a large quantity of orders at a low uh, notional value. Um, but those obviously have to be executed adhering to our regulatory uh, requirements and whatnot. So we get very bursty volume, especially at the open, where uh, because these are low notional orders, we don't always have a uh, market to go and execute those orders at. So we either internalize them within our fractional trading system or we have an internalization engine as well. And uh, if, if you're going to execute that trade on your platform, you have to tape report that to, uh, to a uh, TRF service within 10 seconds of execution. So um, we've got where you have um, hundreds of thousands of orders that are being filled at the open that you have to get to either NASDAQ or uh, NYSE TRF services within 10 seconds of execution. And you have to stamp that at the uh, price at that time. So we need high throughput. We need low uh, latency, not low uh, latency from a execution standpoint, but low latency to drive high throughput. So that's why we started to, uh, to uh, look at what other kinds of services are out there. Like I said, I'm very familiar with a single threaded type of architecture, zero GC, and Aaron was a great fit for the solutions that we needed. Um, so what were we trying to consider when we were looking at uh, what to use to go and retool our trading stack with. We're looking for 
uh, something that was deterministic and uh, resilient. Um, obviously, when we have high uh, bursty times of the day, we didn't want that to have additional uh, latency. That's going to cause uh, regulatory impact if you have uh, latency trying to execute you know, a couple hundred thousand trades or more within 10 seconds. Um, we want zero downtime if there's any server failures. Right? The, uh, the, the three uh, nines there uh, obviously was of great interest to us. We wanted low latency to drive that um, high throughput uh, without expensive infrastructure operating costs, right? Because you have other choices. You can throw uh, money at the problem, scale up with additional servers or whatnot. But if you have a system that has low latency and you build in other tooling like off heap uh, memory usage and what, you can achieve extreme scale without those higher infrastructure costs. And also, we wanted to keep our costs down in terms of uh, counterparties, right? Uh, like I was saying, uh, NASDAQ, TRF, right? You have to pay per fix session that you open with them. So you don't want to have to go to them and ask for 20 fix sessions because that's what you're going to need to, uh, to uh, fulfill the uh, volume. You want to operate at the speed of the system that you are sending to or faster. Otherwise, you're going to need to have additional costs that you wouldn't need otherwise. So what did we do to achieve exchange, exchange grade throughput and uh, resiliency? Well, we used Aaron uh, messaging. Um, Ed, Ed gave a great overview of SBE. Uh, we used that between our gateways that come uh, that uh, are interfacing with the outside world before it goes into our Aaron cluster. We deployed that on high throughput hardware uh, with containerized workloads that we deployed on bare metal and with CPU and network um, accelerators. We chose to put that uh, within NY4, within a co-location uh, data center, because of the amount of because the amount of uh, counterparties that we um, interact with, uh, we deployed we deploy performance engineered code base. Obviously, zero GC, low uh, latency code base to drive that high throughput. We use Aaron cluster for uh, resiliency across multiple. Uh, server failures uh, it, with obviously with the uh, RAF consensus protocol and we use RDO for our fixed gateway to go and route out to the 12 or uh, 14 points of uh, liquidity that we have on the street. So looking at this from the uh, bottom up, right, so we um, have the optimized uh, network packets that we deploy on high throughput hardware. We have kernel bypass with uh, network, with, uh, with advanced uh, network cards. Uh, we are pinning that workload uh, to, to specific CPUs that are closest to the uh, network card. And we have a zero GC code base w using off heap uh, memory and performant data structures from Agrona. So how do we decide to uh, lay out Aaron in our stack initially? Well, uh, like I was saying earlier, it was 2021, just after the uh, MAME stack timeframe, we had uh, one system, our internalization engine, that needed a uh, rewrite. It was C-sharp based. Uh, this system was the easiest for us to implement with because we could take it out of the uh, rotation without impacting customer orders as much. So we had complete control over if orders went to the system or not, and if we were seeing an issue, this, this was the easiest place to go and, uh, to go and uh, pull it out. So it was a great first fit for us to put an error on cluster. So we wrote a, uh, we wrote a client gateway using RDO that was communicating with our vendor OMS at the time, and we were routing that to our internalization engine 
and then uh, the internalization engine either accepts the order or it goes and uh, rejects it back, back to the OMS, and then the OMS will go and uh, route it out to the street if it didn't get a fill from the internalization engine. Um, the important, one important note to say here around throughput is we embedded uh, market data processing into the gateway and not into the cluster because if you want to uh, keep high throughput, if you put the market data into the cluster, obviously for that cluster to operate in a deterministic way, uh, it would need to see all of the uh, market data quotes. That's gonna kill your throughput if you're sending every market data piece into the, into the uh, cluster, especially if you're trading like options or something, right? So instead, we embed the uh, market data within the gateway and we stamp the market data on the order uh, into the uh, payload on the order as it goes into the cluster for um, execution. Um, and then we are we were receiving orders from our uh, from our uh, REST API here, and that would go into the vendor OMS before it would go into that Aeron environment. Going to where we are today, uh, we've really uh, blown out the uh, usage of Aeron here. Uh, I didn't list everything in this because it would have been incredibly small, but we have a OMS cluster now that is interfacing directly to that internalization cluster, and we are receiving orders directly from our API using a um, Avro uh, gateway where we're receiving orders uh, from the Avro gateway, directing them with SBE into the OMS cluster. We also have clients coming in over fix, so we have a client fix gateway with RDO. Uh, and we embed the, the, uh, uh, the uh, market data component in each of these uh, gateways. We are in process of working with Adaptive on a secondary gateway ability where the client fix gateway will go and communicate its state of each fix session to the Aaron cluster so that if, that, uh, if the server dies that that fixed gateway is on, that secondary gateway will obtain the lock from the cluster, and it will receive all the state from the uh, primary fixed gateway, and it will pick up right where that other one left off in terms of sequence numbers and what. And uh, the, uh, d you know, then the downtime there is extremely uh, minimal. You're talking sub-second, uh, 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 downtime in that case upon a server loss. Uh, we also then developed uh, market fix gateways going out to the 14 points of uh, liquidity that we have on the street. Uh, we'll have the same secondary primary setup there with fixed gateways. Uh, things I don't have here, we actually run our environment in a um, hybrid uh, in terms of we run uh, within a uh, co-location facility in NY4, and we also run in um, AWS for all of our post-trade activity. So we have other gateways that are, com that are communicating with that cluster that are sending um, order uh, messages across to AWS, then, then we uh, persist those into our books and records from AWS. Um, and we also have one additional cluster here for tape reporting to uh, TRF, and that's actually our um, highest throughput uh, cluster that we have because it's getting because uh, it's getting trades from other systems within Drive Wealth as well. Uh, so in terms of a uh, retrospective here, right? Um, be sure you are using Aaron Stats to its fullest. The amount of information that you can get from Aaron Stats is incredible. Uh, the ability to uh, dashboard, write uh, dashboards with the state of your cluster. I could spend all day just writing dashboards. Um, you can get the same type of information out of your uh, gateways as well in terms of the gateway uh, connectivity health. Um, and the uh, latency information, right? So you, um, I was going and seeing if I wanted to produce any graphs to include in here, and I was uh, graphing out where we saw when we had the highest throughput that we had throughout any div with any given day, the uh, latency at that time actually decreased as we had the um, highest throughput spikes within the system, which I thought was um, amazing. 
Um, so definitely take advantage of air on stats if you're not. Uh, payload size, right? Um, if you are following the principles and you, you need to keep the payload size as small as possible as that will be your uh, bottleneck there is that the uh, payload size will be what gives you the uh, latency if you're following all of the uh, principles. And like I heard earlier, definitely need a engineering kind of uh, mind shift if you come from a environment that you are typical to um, object-oriented kind of programming, uh, multi-threaded type environments here. So you need to be uh, deterministic focused. Like I was saying earlier in terms of the uh, market data uh, processing, right? There's uh, trade-offs, right? Sometimes it would be a lot easier to inject the uh, market data into the uh, cluster sec so that you've got it available for any decision point, but that comes with a trade-off, right? It comes with the, uh, comes with the uh, comes with a trade-off of impacting your throughput in your system. And um, there's other ways to do that, right? So you make design decisions of, well, if I'm going to need, say, a uh, limit order book or something like that, you would run that limit order book outside of the cluster, and you would get the state from the cluster when that limit order book were to go down and come back up, something to that effect, right? So always uh, trade-offs to consider. Um, so what do we want to do next? I was hearing about live cluster updates. We definitely want to do live, uh, live cluster updates here. Uh, DriveWealth operates 24 by 5 trading. So uh, we really don't have any downtime to do any code uh, releases throughout the uh, week. So doing live cluster updates is definitely something that we're going to be uh, looking to do. Um, we haven't explored using uh, multicast yet. Uh, I'm, we do have different gateways that are getting uh, getting the same type of uh, message as a, another gateway. We could definitely get efficiencies from using uh, multicast. And as we're looking at uh, DR, we are going to be looking at using Air on Crypt versus Air on Premium Cluster Standby to be able to uh, to get the state uh, replicated to a remote site.